Hey guys, Jake Boomer with Limit Out Marine. Uh, I know that a lot of you guys watched the first video I did about my Suzuki. Um, I think it had like 70 hours on it. I was running a digital, I am running a digital 250. Give you guys kind of an update on at now like 180, 190 hours I put on this thing. I have not been nice to it. I've been beating the crap out of it. You can kind of see uh, the lower unit. We got a place up here called the Potholes. We just changed the lower unit oil and I made a mess. I kind of always do. But um, we're hard on them. We run them hard. I run this one hard, hard. It runs at 6,000 RPM almost everywhere it goes. I'm turning a 26 Scorpion. I can turn a 27 down at the Columbia River lower elevations, but most of the time I just don't plate it up too high. I don't like changing props. I don't mess with that kind of stuff. If I'm getting close to the rev limiter, I'll just push the plate back down and, and just not ride it as hard. But 90% of the time, the 26, this is a 21 foot Phoenix, is pretty awesome. One thing you'll notice about this outboard, because you got the cowling off, um, you'll notice that the air intake is in the back. Um, all the other brands use plastic plenums that come to the front. You'll see the black plenums that come to the front and they move the air intake to the front top. And I think that's for like water intrusion protection. If you were to get a lot of water into the cowling, you know, up here is going to be the last place that's going to get water. This, you know, this, this is high enough though that I don't think it's ever going to be an issue. But that's what makes the, the, the cowling a little bit bigger on this particular model. Probably the, my most unfavorite thing about this boat is taking the cowling on and off. Uh, I mean, obviously you don't have to do it very often because it's a Suzuki, it's never broke. You take it off when you change the oil, but that might be the biggest con is the, the cowling is heavy. Um, the other thing I like about this cowling um, is the paint. I like the matte paint, I think it looks cool. Um, but I got concerned when you get water spots on them, like you fish Havasu or fish some of those Col uh, Colorado River areas and you get really bad water spots. On the older motors, since they're a, a smooth finish or a shiny finish, you could get a buffer out and kind of knock them down. I'm I'm scared to do that with this cool matte finish. I'm, I'm afraid of ruining the finish. So you just kind of got to stay on your water spots and keep them off. It looks nice. I need to get after this one. I've been kind of, I've been fishing a lot and beating it up and not fixing, you know, not cleaning it like I should. But what I will tell you, and I said it in the original video, and it has proven true, everybody that we've sold the, uh, one of these Suzukis to, the gas mileage is insane. One of the one of the tournaments that went out of um, Door Shack a couple weeks ago, Blake, our rigger, took his boat, and I he ran it all the way up to the end of nowhere and back and burned like 19 or 20 gallons, where a lot of guys were talking about burning 35 and 40. And I don't I don't think that, that it's 50% better or 100% better. I, I just think it does really well. So I would consider gas mileage is probably one of the biggest pros about the motor, but reliability too. And, and and I know that a lot of guys that are watching this video have heard of the dreaded shift actuator. This boat, this motor, because it's digital, actually has an electric shift actuator, just like uh, some of the other brands. I've never had an issue with it. We, we have sold a bunch of these motors. We've never had the shift actuator problem. It's kind of the cool thing. This is a, a reliable, and this, this motor has been around for a while because they were using it in the saltwater world. So no shift actuator issues. No, no real issues other than I, I bent the prop shaft like the first six hours I have it, I had it. But even that repair, the way they put this mo the lower unit together, uh, the mechanic, I got to you know kind of help him do it and watch him. It, 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 everything came out and went together really well. Everything is machined super tight and uh, I don't know, there's just quality in the metallurgy is what I would have to say. But other than that, it just hasn't been any issues. Great gas mileage. I don't, like I said, that, that story about 20 uh, uh, gallons versus 40, I don't believe that's true, but I do know that I am not burning near the gas that I was before. One of the biggest issues that we've found that I think is worth worthy of noting is setup is a big deal. Boats that are hard to plane, that were hard to plane in the past, and usually we fixed it with props. You know, some of the older Rangers, some of the Z model Rangers, where the, when the Fury came out, it really fixed that time to plane. Motors and, and boats like that, we have struggled with a few of those to figure out the right setup. It's taken some time. Now a Phoenix, because Phoenix have always been so good getting out of the hole, we just bolt them on and they go. We don't have to mess with them at all. But a couple of the motor, the boats that we worked on, we really had to, to, to kind of fine tune it. You couldn't just slap a 26 Scorpion on them and send them on their way. They really had, we really had to mess with uh, trim angle, you know, like put uh, wedges in to get the motor to, to have enough negative trim to push that nose down or mess with different props. So if we had any issue at all, it would be set up. But I, but I tell you that almost every one of them has had 
the right setup. You just have to mess with it. And I would say the first thing to look at if you're rigging a Ranger or you're looking at rigging a heavier boat that has a hard time getting on plane, some of some boats are just a little bit uh, harder to crack over. First thing I would look at is get in some wedges. Get some wedges in there, two and a half or five degrees, and see if that fixes that problem where it won't pop over real quick. And then, and then I'll obviously bring the prop size down to you know a pitch smaller that can help too. I haven't seen a better prop than the Scorpion. I hate to say it, but. I've tried everything. I it, Back in the day, I used to think the Yamaha show props were like very coveted and one of the best. If you could get it to fit on any motor, it was a great prop because uh, of the design. The Scorpion is a lot like a Yamaha show prop. It has a lot of the similar, it looks the same. It is not the same. I turned a 27 Yamaha show on this and I hit the rev limiter where I couldn't hit the rev limiter with the 26 Scorpion. And the other thing about the Scorpion that I've noticed is, you, know, you can kind of tell it's, it is a burly prop, like it is, it is heavy bladed, thick. It has very little flex in my opinion. So I like that for durability and, you know, running over sand dunes like we do up here. But I, I would I would say it's still the best prop. They, they just, even though they look the same, there's just enough difference. I couldn't even turn a 27. There are a couple guys that are turning the Furies and liking those. I haven't tried one on this boat, but a couple of the Rangers that we sent down the road, uh, a Fury model helped it get on pad a little bit better. It just didn't have the same top end as the Scorpion. So I love this motor. The cool thing about this motor is it's a little over a year and a half old and it's still under warranty for like three and a half years. And I can extend the warranty for another three years after that. I think it has like an eight year warranty that I can extend it within the first five years. Uh, that's pretty, I mean like when, in this day and age, like this boat, my goal is to keep this boat for a little while. Uh, just to show the longevity and the durability of the Phoenix boat itself, because I'm a big fan. This 921 has been all over the country, has 730 hours on the hull itself. And then, you know, I've got it's on a second motor. I've beat the piss out of it, and it's still strong. It doesn't rattle when you're in rough water. So my goal is to keep beating this boat up a little bit and kind of document, you know, the things we have to fix. And, and I'll give you an example. One of the things we did do when we put this boat on or when we put this Suzuki on was we put um, a Bob's machine shop jack plate on it and the main reason i did that is because i knew the suzuki wanted to run higher up on the plate and you'll notice we messed with it we this motor is as high as you can get it i'm on the the top bolt so when my plate is all the way down i'm up pretty high we just found that the suzuki likes to be high on the plate so i just kept raising it till i got it to the point that i was the most efficient with the plate all the way down and the idea behind that was when i played it all the way up it's generally because i'm in really really shallow water and i want to be able to maneuver around i don't really need a lot of downward or negative plate even in rough water so i set it up so when this plate's all the way down in the roughest water the 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 jack plate itself is in its most sturdy situation most sturdy position plate all the way down big heavy motor on the back with lots of power there's no flex in the plate so i we designed it this way but we found that this i, I really like this machine shop plate because it is sturdy it's heavy so if you guys have any questions about Suzuki's you want one on your boat we're repowering them we, we're, we've done a lot of them we, and we're getting pretty good at it call Limit Out Marine Russ Baker Blake Lesher Chris Ferry call me we'll, we'll hang one of these on there I, I just don't think you'll be disappointed and if you got a good hole that you really like and a boat that with a layout that you really like and I know with the way this economy is and interest rates you kind of want to hang on to it I'm, you're going to add value by putting one of these back on your boat especially if you have an older two-stroke this is going to make your boat your used boat look a lot more attractive to a potential buyer down the road, especially with it'll probably still have plenty of warranty left. So check us out at liminoutmarine.com and thanks for watching guys.